<laughs> okay, boys and girls, you look at that time. What is the time, Daddy? Say what the time? It says it is 7:05. Yes, on the planet Earth, we are here on our uh, mission. Hey, what's up? We are here on our mission to go to Bartram Park Road. Now that's way out there, and it's a bit of a drive. But it's worth it. Um, we have Dorian so far. We have it as a Category One hurricane coming at us. Uh, that will be here within four and a half days. So I want to kind of do a street dredge uh, and check out and see what is available uh, to rescue. Uh, remember, we're not expecting anything. This is not something that we're, we're going to come up with baseball size or golf ball size meteorites. We're going to find minis and babies uh, and. Uh, Micros. Uh, remember, in in a scientific sense, uh, micro meteorites are still dust particles. These are cosmic interplanetary dust particles that are microscopic. So when I say that I'm finding micro meteorites, that may be an incorrect term uh, because the true sense of a micro meteorite is literally the size of a dust particle that you can't really see. Uh, if so, they are you know, not too big. Now there are meteorites that you will find that are small spheroids and uh, those are intermixed with like hematite balls and other uh, types of uh, chemicals that have bond together to form spheroids uh, through the atmosphere, through uh, industrial and chemical processes uh, by mankind. And uh, But there are, like I said, some small spheroids that will make it through the atmosphere and uh, after banging around the atmosphere for sort of quite a, around a certain amount of time, uh, it's pretty amazing. We might find some of those two intermixed, and uh, I've already found some in the past, and I've already collected all, all of those. So this is going to be really excited. Uh, this is uh, just a street dredge. Uh, let's see what's in the mess. You know, there's going to be a lot of trash and stuff like that, as expected, but, uh, you know, just cross your fingers and see what we can save before the hurricane. I'll see you when we're there. Okay, folks, we're here. Um, I got here a little bit early, as I expected, and uh, I just want to say, hey, yay, we did it. This isn't where I'm actually doing the work, but that road over there is Bartram, and you can see weird, there's a rock over there. Woo -hoo. All right, let's check out and see what we got. I got my food, I've already taken my uh, pain medication, which is usually for like, you know, aches and pains on the road. I have my sample bag. I have my carrying bag, which actually is a makeshift Celestron binocular bag. Um, here's my magnet stick. It's your full-fledged uh, rare earth magnets. So let's do this. All right, let's hit the road and dredge and see what we're going to find. Wish us luck. You never know. Oh, here's another thing I have to add. You know, I don't actually work for the USGS, but I put these kind of signs out on the car to make sure that people do not tow my car because uh, you don't want your car towed. And people really aren't going to get all mad over the USGS checking out the area looking for rocks and or whatnot. And by God, there could be a sinkhole around here by God. Oh, okay, you guys, so we're at the halfway mark, and there's still lots of traffic coming on, but, and I've been dredging and dredging and dredging, and I have a bag load of stuff, and then I came across this little friend, I don't know if you can see that very well, it's a nice little, uh, interesting specimen, and it's iron, of course, we're probably looking at an aggregate, Something that's inside the road here that got loose and it's part of the, the but man it's heavy it's dense and it looks like a nice solid little baby meteorite probable meteorite my friends all right so i got back um took a shower i'm all washed i'm all squeaky clean and everything like that and i'm all happy and stuff like that so i really overworked it uh did a four mile uh, adventure today and uh, uh, way too much sun I got sunburned but was it worth it um, I don't know I've got this humongous bag of stuff I did find so far out of the stuff that I as I was going along in my search I did find a couple things let's go ahead and switch the uh, camera over so that I can do that I can't let's go ahead and here I'm gonna do this 
Okay, so here are four pieces that I found that were interesting. Uh, they're iron. As you can tell. Um, these I've I've looked at a little bit so far, and they're very interesting looking. Uh, this one here I call the ghost. Looks like an aggregate. Oh, let's focus. But it's definitely an interesting little specimen. I think it's got some sort of orientation. I call it the ghost because look at that. It's got this really cute little shape. Yeah, that's an interesting little guy. And this is red. I call it red because it's got lots of rust on it, but it's kind of rounded. This could be human, obviously, but it also looks like something small, like an Agudal or an Imichul or whatever you want to call it, from Morocco. It's just, I like it because it's really rounded and um, it doesn't look like it's just like something that's been broken off. Okay. This uh, guy is really cool to me, like this one. This is an interesting iron piece that I found. This is the one that I had on the end of the uh, magnet stick. But it's definitely iron and not a uh, New Mexico um, slag, volcanic slag. I got a whole bag of that and magnet type. But these are little iron individuals that I found. And uh, I'm very, very just uh, impressed with this cat. Very cool. I cleaned it up a little bit to get some of the dust and the grime and the grip and some of the... It's just amazing. Heavy as hell and totally iron metal. It's not a slag. It could be human slag. Of course, these all could be aggregates of different types and sizes, mind you. But uh, I absolutely love what we've got so far. And look it. I have a whole bag of stuff to go through. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so the prelims are in on what I found for uh, Bartram. And as you can see, if you're a geology person, or a person who knows anything about geology, we're looking at a lot of street rock, magnetite, granites. Sometimes there's limestones and other things in there, and it's got the asphalt residual crap all over it. When we come over here, look at this. Here's another batch of the stuff that we found. Everybody's favorite nightmare in the meteorite world, if you're a person who's actually out in the field in suburbia, like I am doing suburban meteorite hunting, you'll find lots of this New Mexico uh, volcanic slag with the iron bits and balls inside of it. You'll see this pan down. different than the rest of them and this guy just looks like a, a chondrite to me and it's uh it's it what holes you know this is a very uniform and solid um i don't know i'll do a file on it i'm 99 percent sure it's still um one of our friends here down below the slag. This is an interesting one that had been out there. See, you can see the ball burning through iron. I said, Oh, it's a car. Oh, no, shut. And then, of course, here's our false uh, lunars right here. Oh, it's a lunar meteor right now. It's not mystery spheres. We find these all over Florida. They're like, oh, it's like muskets from muskets, right? No, it's probably from other things. Spray pick cans, bottles, I don't know. You tell me what the hell. Else. Why would you need metal balls? Are these for magnets? I don't know. Here's a lot of the other stuff that we've got going on here that we found. There you go. Lots of trash, human metal slag, bits, drill bits. Bits of magnets themselves and more trashola. 
Trust me, there was a lot more trash that I pulled off the ground than this, my beautiful friends. Uh, here's some uh, small agrets. I think these are either brass or copper. I don't know, this is part of the ground. You can't see the colors due to the fact that the camera is, there we go, a little bit more. Um, so they've got like this uh, uh, brass color that couldn't be meteorites. I'm still going for the agrets, some sort of copper colored ones. And here are the final finds for the day. Let's see if I can get some color off of this. Too bright, too dark, you know the drill. Um, uh, yeah, I still have a whole bag down here to go through and sift of like the sand and dust and crap. But uh, that's later tonight when I'm really bored and stuff. And I'll go through that with the mi microscope and my scope and the Maggie. That's the largest metal piece that I got in this. In this I love how orient, like, oriented a bunch of these are. So these are all iron or metal. Some of these might be aggregates or aggregates. Why did I call them that? I don't know. But for those people who work in the industry and do like construction and asphalt and stuff like that, they know that they put metal bits inside that and mix it up to help slow down the tread of the cars and the tires and the stuff and stuff so all right well yay wow where's a quarter let's put a quarter next to this and show how big this cat is next to that yeah, let's Too bad. You know, a couple of pieces of metal. Aze meteorites. Well, that's just it. I'm going to have to go ahead and see if I can get in touch with uh, some of the best scientific minds in this region. Um, I'm going to try to get in touch with Dr. Mike Reynolds. I love you, Dr. Mike. You the bomb. God bless you and, and, and your wife. I mean, I hope everything's going good. But we got some rocks to look at and see if we can... Uh, Show the world what is a meteorite out in the field and what is not out in the field. And uh, in Florida, I have to say I have to go and, and suggest hunting the irons because chondrites just don't last. And if there are any chondrites in here, they're probably not chondrites. They're probably these beauties, these beautiful slags from out west that we use to fill in holes and pot house. Stuff like that. So, God bless you. Um, the hunt goes on. Uh, we will see what we find. Hopefully, more than just the slag, my friends. I love you. Peace and respect. May your energies be strong and renewed. And I will see you guys all later. Later, later. Love you, beautiful people. You are so beautiful and intelligent. I love you. Bye. So we will be investigating the Acosta Bridge and we'll be going right up and then right back down. How many decades, who knows how long, what build up, what fell on this bridge? Let's go find out right now. Hi guys, Rick Marston here, suburban meteorite hunter. I am out and about at, it says 716. Last time I said 705, it was actually 706. So I'll actually show you that we can see we are on the same page today. Okay, we're hitting Acosta Bridge in Jacksonville, Florida. You always wondered what the hell are on those bridges around those walking bridges. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the south side of the Acosta Bridge. I have did the north side before, and all I found was a bunch of magnetite and uh, it's, uh, New Mexico volcanic slag. Uh, let's see what's on the south side. I haven't ever been there before. I'm not the best with heights, but I mean, I, I'm okay with flying an airplane to being in tall places. But, you know, when you're so close to the edge of a bridge that can take you to the edge of oblivion, then you get kind of in. So, all right, we're just gonna go ahead. I'm almost here. I'm gonna pull over and uh, park, and we're gonna go right up the bridge and collect as many pieces as I can of whatever's magnetic. 
And remember, whatever's magnetic is coming home with us. Love you. See you very soon. All right. As you see, you totally want to avoid the train tracks. Avoid the train tracks at all costs because everything that's on there is slag. No matter what you think. Um, to be honest, when I first started out looking at meteorites, I had the weird thought that maybe, you know, that they might be, uh, the train tracks are a good location. Because logically, in a way, people don't go there. It's illegal to go there unless you work for the train people. You know, so avoid the train track. It's illegal to be there and everything there is slag. So here we go. Here's the Acosta Bridge. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to see the debris, but we're going to try and see what's here. There's a lot of traffic today, so it'll be fun. Okay, here we are, Costa Bridge, and I'm street regging on the bridge. Yeah, see all those little holes that we see here with all these little rocks? I take, here's a good example of what I'm doing. This looks scary, and it should be because you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Not really. Somebody has to clean these goddamn drains. So, magnet stick. The leg span and then to the next one, etc. Let's see what we find, boys and girls. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's metal. All right, here we go. What a beautiful view. It's like we might have some porpoises or manatees down there. I'm not sure, but it's really, really awesome today. Wow. What I do for meteorites, man. Seriously, what I do for meteorites. Okay, boys and girls, so I took some time off and went through and sorted through the sand and the icky goos from the Acosta Bridge South. And you can see a lot of stuff in there. There's magnets. These are wonderful friends again that are like granite and uh, other basalts and other kind of concrete and asphalt rock. There's all the green in there, isn't that cool? In, in blues and greens and, and reds and oranges and all that mixed up when you look at your asphalt when you get out of the car at the market. If it's not all black, look down and see what colors they are. It's pretty interesting. Uh, here, pretty icky. Look at all of this. I decided to take the one bag and just fill the whole bag with trash and with my specimens um, because normally I have two bags but this time I just took one because I wanted to go up bridge, down the bridge, see what they had that was sitting there. Can you believe this? All of this is the typical New Mexico uh, volcanic slag with the iron balls, the aggregates inside of it. Um, as you can see, all of this was found on the south side of the bridge. And these uh, literally are like completely and utterly magnetic. Here's my little magnet. We've got, and as you can see, here's the tester. Look at that. Are they magnetic? Yes. Disgusting. I know. Anyways, and then there's these specialty ones that just looked a little different than the others. So I'm going to go over those. Uh, they're still slag, mind you, but they also are others. There's a couple others that I had uh, took a look at. Here's some more human-made crap, which is iron, those little balls again. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, here we go. Um, the black thing looks artificial. This black rock looks kind of artificial, if you ask me. Here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm trying to do the white thing. Anyways, um, there's more metal pieces. Here's a bunch of aggregates you can see that just look like they're all like thrashed and weird. But these are uh, all uh, metal pieces that were found on the surface. And these are the largest pieces that I found just sitting out. Um, this is cool. They're all about two to four grams each. Some of them look like they're just the, t the tips of stuff. Like this thing looks like maybe the tip of something. But the rest of them just look like uh, mini uh, irons. I'll have to clean them off and study them. Well, so I'll see you in a few moments and we'll take a good look and see what these look like after they've been completely cleaned and stuff. But yeah, what was on the top of the uh, 
Acosta Bridge South. That's what we found. Let's see what we got. I mean, that was the best stuff that we found. I remember this is very, very, very hardcore to try to find any meteorites, but I was so curious to see what was out there, what was up there. Um, and there was a bunch of sand traps. So these pieces right here were like the best specimens that could be iron probables, but I'll have to clean them and check them out. Most likely they're aggregates, but those are big for aggregates. So, whoa, two to, two, one to two, one to four grams, I'd say. All right, so we uh, are here. I've got uh, on display um, some of our finds from the Acosta Bridge, and I've got some specimens that I've collected uh, from the last six weeks of uh, probable iron octahedrite probables. I'm going to say that again, probables. Um, aggregates most likely in a lot of senses, but these are some of the best pieces that I've got from the last six weeks. This uh, uh, Here we are. Here is the... Uh, Chondrite that I found, which is uh, two grams, very very cool. We got, like I said, uh, and these right here are the winners from the Acosta Bridge South. These look like little agudals. If you are uh, a real meteorite person and know things about meteorites, then you know about agudal and imichal or imichals. These are North Africa irons. Um, these really fit that mold well because I have a large collection of those. And uh, I was really, really impressed with those when I found these. I'm going to quickly flip these over so I can uh, show you their other sides. It's very, very oriented. Very, very cool. Well, who knows how long these actually sat there on the bridge before I found these. Uh, it could have been uh, you know, a few decades. You never know, but these are very, very oriented, rounded uh, specimens. And uh, it's absolutely look very cool so and there's a couple of more most likely aggregates the uh, centers of uh, the metal in the New Mexico slag that breaks down after cars roll off uh, on them and they all just you know they start laying around a piece of basalt that I had filed down at one end I think you can see some of the color there this little guy right here in a great big world. But what's so funny about this little guy is he's got lots of white spherical uh, vesicule holes on the outside, but nothing on the inside. But look at that. The core looks like it's almost silver-like, right? Like metal. It's very magnetic. So I'm going to need to test this and see if that is basalt or whatever the hell it is. Here's an artificial piece of something, slag. And actually, maybe not in this. I don't think you can see it in this. I'm a little shaky being so close. Um, as you can see, it's an artificial piece of something, a rock made, man-made something, but on the inside of that, you could tell it's definitely man-made because it's non-magnetic and it doesn't look like hematite. So that's a very interesting specimen. And like I said, it, but it has like blue iridescence in the right light. I'm going to quickly try to change the light here so if it doesn't, no, nothing's coming out. Never mind, but yeah, it does have like a, a blue iridescence, so it's an artificial stone. It's not real, obviously. So I don't know any metal besides human type that's not magnetic, unless they magnetize them. That again, here's another close-up look at the chondrite that I found. I don't stay it today at all. That's the chondrite that I found on nine eight, uh, off Ghost Light, just south of Ghost Light Road, Greenbrier, and a couple of the uh, probables that I had found from the last few weeks. Iron probables. They're all wonderful pieces. You know, this there's Ghosty again. I did I cleaned him off. He's really cool. In a lot of senses people will say, oh these are just aggregates. These are all pieces like this. Looks like the core of uh, a New Mexico volcanic slag. And uh, it's really cool looking. But it's most likely just an aggregate core. There's a couple pieces that are synthetic that look nice. But after you know, after cleaning them, it's like hmm, most likely they are going to be synthetic. Again, um, aggregates like this giant one here, it's a 17 grams, is most likely an aggregate. It's sad and scary because I swear to God, it looks like a Campo de Silo. And uh, here's something else that looks like a Sakota Lin. 
But I think the, the detail thing that you'll find is these bubbly, sticky army things. Like you see like this, this has a little big bubble coming out of it. You know, a lot of iron meteorites that I have that I've collected and purchased from real people don't have those little arms and append uh, uh, appendages. Here, I'm going to flip over Ghosty here and uh, show you what I'm talking about. These little arms sticking up. Looks like our, our aggregates, but you know, I have seen weird things going on with the uh, Sukkot Alins. They've got a lot of those little things on them. See, notice that little arms is what I'm talking about here. A lot of irons don't have that because when you're going through the ablation process, a lot of that stuff is melted off or smoothed down so much. These are beautiful. If they are individual irons, they've been fantastic finds. And I'm very blessed and grateful. Remember, I'm all, oh, just six weeks in, and we've already gotten one chondrite. Six weeks in, two times a week, just taking a walk outside with my magnet stick, running the lines of specific, strategically picked out areas that may be a place that nobody else cleans or has been to before. But these right here are the ones from the Acosta Bridge. And uh, they really aren't aggregate-y. They look like... Immatules or agri dolls from North Northwest Africa, Morocco, and uh, just I really am impressed with the, the fact that you, know, you can do this. So, uh, dredging works, no matter what everybody says to you and says that it's improbable or impossible to find meteorites in your own hometown. That's bullshit. I'm sorry, it's bullshit. Absolutely, you can find meteorites. You just need to get your ass out there. You're going to find a lot of the stuff that could be, probables, maybes, but that's half of the, uh, of the mystery and the excitement of trying to find meteorites in your hometown. Rick Marston, suburban meteorite hunter, out. I mean, straight out. That's all I'm saying. You can do this. Do it.